Welcome to today's concert. I hope you'll find the program interesting and enjoyable. There's some unusual and very rarely played uh, pieces, but you know the piano repertoire is so vast that there's so much to choose from, and I think that uh, it's up to us performers to find things that I, I think they, you know, are worthwhile pieces or good pieces, whether the composer is well known or not. So today's program, you're going to hear some some rather unusual, uh, rarely done pieces. Um, as I usually do, I'm going to say briefly just a couple of comments about each of these and uh, give you a little bit of insight you be able to maybe understand and, and enjoy these a little bit more. The first composer here, Manuel Arate, is one of the foremost composers from Guatemala. And I played down there several times and I got to know several of their compo the music of several of their composers and I thought, you know, it's pretty nice stuff really. And in this particular piece, uh, the Tres Dances, Three Dances, which he wrote in the early 1950s, I thought were particularly striking. Um, they're very short, they're, they're, they're connected together, they just follow each other almost without a break. Uh, very vigorous, uh, the first and the last one, and the second one more restrained and some, I think, quite interesting bitonal harmonies. Um, very typical of music for, and that I've also heard by other uh, Latin American composers, and uh, so it has kind of a folk-like nature to it, repetitive patterns, but I think they're very, very effective. So that's who he was, Manuel Arati. Composer from Guatemala, so I'd like to start off with his three dances, the three dances.
you so very much. Thank you. Well, among the uh, many composers that, for some reason, very seldom are heard, uh, their music seldom is heard, there are, are, for some reason, many women composers. There are many excellent ones. They've been around for centuries. And, uh, you know, I think that they, their music deserves just as much of a hearing as anybody else's. Clara Schumann, of course, a very, very famous person, but we know her a lot more in another role. She was one of the great pianists of the 19th century. She probably was the great, first great woman pianist in that romantic era, where she was the wife of Robert Schumann, the composer. But what is less known, much less known, is that she was a, quite a composer in her own right. She wrote quite a lot of, of compositions, and I think they're really nice pieces, they're pieces of quality. So I thought that I would kind of introduce you maybe to some of her music through these next two works, I mean, the, the Scherzo, Opus 10, and then those Drei Romanzen, Opus 21, which are, again, short pieces and with different moods. And they're, all, like I said, all fairly, fairly short. And the Drei Romanzen, especially, the first one is kind of more intense in, in expression, rather flowing. The second, very short and very bouncy, very light. And then the last one, very intricate finger work through there. So, uh, quite contrasting pieces. And the Scherzo also has contrasting seconds to it. So uh, this is, like I say, a side of her that is very, very little known, I think. So I'd like you to have a chance to hear a couple of her pieces. So the Scherzo and then the Delilah Mons.
come to really the only piano work of any substance by the English composer Benjamin Britten, uh, his Holiday Diary, which he wrote in 1934. Of course, we know him from his uh, several operas, the wonderful collection called The Ceremony of Carols, which we hear Christmas time a lot, and other works. But he, for some reason, he was quite a, a good pianist himself, and but he really didn't write for piano as, as such. Uh, I mean, there's one tiny piece that he wrote in the 1960s, I think it was 1963 or so, called Nocturne or Nocturne. Uh, I, and I think it was for a competition, especially written piece. But other than that, there's really nothing else. And, and uh, one note sometimes laments that, you know, he didn't write more, but it's really nice music. Holiday Diary here, written in 1934, and there are four parts here. Therefore, it's not meant in the program, there, there, there are four parts. Uh, the first one's called Early Morning Bathe, second one is Sailing, third one's Fun Fair. And the last one, night. Um, kind of a port musical portrait of being in an English seaside town in that era. So uh, it starts out in a kind of a uh, very jerky uh, sort of. Seems like it's almost disconnected at first. A little, just little chord fragments. But then it goes to a very jolly, rollicking theme for, the, for most of it, and ends very, very strongly. Very beautiful lyrics. Second one, the, the sailing, except in the middle where we get into some kind of bitonal harmonies again, you know, we did, the scene was calm at first and got a little bit rough, you know, in waters, and then it calms down again at the end. Very intricate uh, and um, vigorous third piece, the fun fair, uh, has several contrasting contrasting themes which come between the main, the main thing. And then the last one is extremely quiet, extremely slow, and it's one of several that he wrote on the subject of night, actually. Uh, and it just kind of dies away, the harmony sort of blend in and out of each other, and very kind of an air of mystery, a mystery about it, that land, the last one. So these are the four pieces that make up Holiday Diary, which let's say is Benjamin Britten's only real piece for piano.
you very, very much. Well, you know, even famous composers have works which get very, very seldom played. Uh, and nothing to do with the quality. Sometimes it's just that other works get played more frequently. So we're talking about Beethoven. We know pianists mostly can play his sonatas or from his sonatas. But there are various other pieces of his which uh, just get overshadowed because of that. But they're really, uh, I think, just as fine as, as, the, uh, as the sonatas. And among those uh, is this one that, which I want to uh, do for you right now. It's five variations on Rule Britannia. This was written around 1803, 1804. Uh, Beethoven, of course, was German, he worked in Vienna, uh, but he admired British culture. And he had, just before he wrote this set, he wrote another set, seven variations on God Save the King. And he probably still admired Napoleon at that time, but, but still at the same time he, he admired British culture. Because you know when, the, when Napoleon declared himself emperor and he had dedicated the third symphony to him, he scratched off that dedication. And 10 years later he wrote an orchestral piece called Wellington's Victory. So I think his mind changed about Napoleon. But anyways, you know, he wrote this at this time, about 1803, 1804. They're very short, and they're, they're connected to each other. Um, uh, it was, again, like, like with the, with the uh, Manuel Arakis pieces, the, the, the variations almost run next to each other without really having any kind of a, any, any sort of break. So it's a, just a charming little set, which uh, you never hear, but there it is, you know, so here we go. <coughs>
Well, you know that one of the most frequently and popular works for orchestra by any 20th century composer is that in large work called The Planets by Gustav Holst, the big piece in seven movements where each movement titled after one of the planets. But what Holst was focusing on is more the astrological rather than astronomical meaning, you know, of that. And like I say, it's, a, it's one of the more frequently performed orchestral pieces by any 20th century composer. The Japanese composer Katsuma Nakajima made a very nice transcription of actually the whole set. And so I'd like to play for you now his transcription of that lovely second piece, Venus the Bringer, uh, Venus the Bringer of Peace. Um, you know, it's very quiet, very sublime, you know, in the original soft strings and woodwinds and that sort of thing. And it just absolutely, just, just total, total, total peace and bliss, really. I think he made a really fine transcription of this set mood just as it should be. So I'd like to play this transcription of Venus the Bringer of Peace from the Planets.
opening piece here our concert is one of those very intricate transcriptions which were so popular uh, in the turn of the 20th century, latter part of the 19th century. Uh, he and his tent, tent play these kinds of pieces more often than they do now, uh, taken from various sources. Could be operatic, symphonic, or something else. Or this is Rachmaninoff's transcription for piano of the very well-known uh, prelude from Bach's third partita for unaccompanied violin. You know, the six works for unaccompanied violin and Bach's are very challenging pieces for any violinist as well. This is also very, very intricate challenging for you know, a pianist, and it's kind of a non-stop, the beginning to end sort of dash, you know, once you start, you really can't stop, you know, that kind of thing. But I think Rachmaninoff made a very good transcription, and I know you'll recognize this thing. <laughs> 